Hi, my name is Trey Stewart. I'm defensive back coach at Illinois College, and today we're going to talk a little bit about the read two defense, or as most people know it, as palms. So um, when we start with our coverage, we're first going to start with our Sam linebacker calling out our strength so we know where to line up. So in this case, he's always going to go to the field. That's his most base rule. Of course, there's rules to go against everything, but at his base core, he's always going to go to the field. So in this case, he'd give a Louie call from the def defensive perspective. So um, our free safety and our field corner are both going to travel with him. On the opposite side, we'll have our boundary corner, strong safety. There we go, easy enough. So as we start talking about the specifics, we'll start with the corners, um, starting with the field corner. I line both corners up, especially at the start of camp, right at about seven yards off and one yard inside leverage. So um, that's where their read's gonna be. In, in my opinion, that's the easiest way for them to read through the number two receiver to the quarterback. So as they get more confident and they get better at running the coverage, we can maybe creep them up to five yards or maybe even creep them back and let them get more of a flat foot read. So as they begin, the field corner will do what we call a step and gather for his read step. So we don't want a pure shuffle because I don't want his feet off of the ground. I always want him ready to trigger up on shorter routes. So he'll take two what we call step and gather steps, which is simply stepping and gathering your feet and stepping and gathering your feet, doing it twice at a pretty high rate of speed because there are going to be guys pushing you vertically at the time. So um, that is going to be the technique for the field corner and the boundary corner. So now, where are his eyes? Those are his steps, where are his eyes? His eyes are going to be here on the number two receiver reading his, um, his route and his release. So what we declare as a vertical threat is anything past linebacker depth. We're not going to say it's going to be right at six yards or right at five yards. As this backer begins to reroute, now we know as he pushes past that guy, it is now a vertical. So his eyes are on here, knowing that if two goes vertical, the safety will take care of him. All he has to do is take care of one. Same exact thing over here. Two pushes vertical after the wheel gives him a reroute. He knows he has to take care of this receiver man to man now. OK, so, you know, when we talk about technique and eyes, we're going to start him low in a tilt. So his butt is going to be to the sideline while he's taking a step and gather steps. So he'll step and gather and step and gather. So now we'll start to talk a little bit of the concepts he'll see from his perspective. The most basic is going to be the bench concept. So he'll get the out route. When he gets the out route, now he knows this is where his eyes are going. So now he's going to read the quarterback, which we call front shoulder intentions. And as the quarterback turns his shoulder to face the out route, now he knows he can trigger up. If he doesn't get the front shoulder intentions at that time, there's no point of him flying up here for no reason. Now, if it's something where guys are starting to hit us quick and we've got to get there now, we can take care of that. But what he's going to be doing, which will segue me into the safeties, is he's going to be waiting for an up call from this guy. Now, everybody knows when two goes out, most of the time, one's either coming back in or pushing vertical. So the safety's job, he's going to first line up inside leverage of the number two receiver about 10 yards off the ball. He's not going to be crouched as low as this guy, and his read steps aren't going to be as deliberate. I call it a read three BP. So he's just going to get slow, not fast backpedal steps, but he's going to start getting into his pedal to protect the vertical. Because at the end of the day, he's the guy who's going to be taking the vertical route, no matter which guy it is. So his rule here is, first off, he always maintains inside leverage. So even if this receiver is starting to stem inside, but he's still pushing us vertical, he needs to weave for inside leverage so he can't um, think the backer's going to pass it off and then the backer pushes right past him. So as this guy is weaving for inside leverage, he is also reading the uh, release of the number two receiver. So as I said, number two receiver pushes out, number one receiver pushes vertical. He knows as soon as this guy breaks his route, truly breaks his route underneath linebacker depth. It is no longer a vertical. His eyes have got to go here, knowing that this guy's probably going to be the vertical threat. So when he opens his hips, 
he has to be going directly to the hip of the receiver. If you're going to overshoot him, it's going to leave a huge cover two hole, the whole shot that every OC wants to hit. If you undershoot him, of course, that's 88 and out the gate, what nobody wants. So he'll open his hips, go straight to the back hip of this receiver while giving this guy an up call, letting him know he can now come here. So to get to a less messy part of the board, now we start talking about so, coach, man, there's a lot of, there's a couple of problem routes that we're afraid of. So, one of the things that we see a lot to try to beat palms, number two, we'll push vertical to clear this safety out. This safety gets a vertical. What he has to do, he has to turn into his receiver, make contact. That's a big rule. Everybody wants to be a cute defensive back and not make contact. You've got to get into his hip, and now you're carrying a vertical, whether he's running a post whether he's running a corner or whether he's purely going vertical. The hardest thing for this safety to do is going to be the end breaking routes. So the dig and the post. So now this guy's pushed him just vertical enough where he thinks, ah, I need to open my hips. He's got to be athletic enough to get down in here and drive on the dig. Or if this guy breaks his route, since he is inside leverage, if he goes on the post, he's got to fight back to the top field shoulder to protect himself from the deep shot. Okay, so what we have here, so if we get a post by two, he's working over the top field shoulder. It's going to be the same rule for the boundary corner and also the field corner. If we get the double post, he's going to be the guy on here. He sees two go vertical. He knows he has one man to man. He'll stay here and he will work over the top of the post. Okay, so as we um, as we continue and we get to the film, you guys will see more route concepts and you guys will start to understand what the different intricacies of the coverage will look like against all kinds of different concepts. All right, so as we start watching a little bit of tape and um, we start looking at everything, remember, these are not perfect clips. These are times where I'll probably get excited here and start coaching again. So as we look here, here's our Sam linebacker. As I said, this is the guy that has declared our field and he's taking the field corner and the free safety with him. Boundary corner's here, strong safety. The boundary safety is now here. We're looking at a two by two set, just as we saw on the board. So as we start the clip, boom, we now see this guy has ran the out route. He has clearly declared it's an out route. There is no question whether that is an out route. As you can see, the corner here also already has his foot in the ground. He sees quarterback front shoulder intentions. He's going there. He sees the out route, now he has time to get there. As we take a peek at the safety, the safety already has his hips open, and he's now exploding to the number one receiver. Now, I might even tell this guy his track is going a little bit too much towards the pylon, and he can be a little bit more aggressive and go towards the receiver. But overall, the read, they are doing well. So we get to the receiver. Don't quite get the pass breakup we're looking for, but that's okay. We'll deal with that. So something else I'm going to teach this corner right here. Something I think will get him from making the tackle to uh, getting a pass breakup himself. He's got to get more weight on this front leg. He needs to have at least 70% of the weight uh, of his body on this front leg and 30% on the back. So when he reloads, he's not taking this extra gather to get there. Boom, it happens that much faster, and that's what we're looking for, and that's what's going to get this guy there to, instead of making a quick tackle, to get to being able to break up that pass. As we look at another example, so this time, we're getting guys pushing vertically. Now, especially up here to the field side, this is not a clear read. He does make an inside move, but in my opinion and in this safety's opinion, that needs to just be a stem, which means he never took his eyes off of him. That was his guy the entire time. As we look down here, these guys both get vertical routes and they stay on top of the post. Both guys, safety, inside leverage, he comes to stick, corner comes to stick. Up here also, corner's getting the step and gather steps that we spoke about. Now, he also needs a little bit more weight on his front leg, but now he's ready to take number one man-to-man. -man. At the end of the day, our defensive backs need to come up and be able to secure a tackle, so good job there. So here, play three. Still in doubles, we're still in palms. 
And as we look at it here, we get a little bit of play action. That's fine. That doesn't affect us in the back. Our eyes are in the right place. We're reading the pattern. Two pushes vertically. Safety. Maybe should have a little bit more inside leverage, but I'll give him the benefit of the doubt there. He sees this guy. Boom. His eyes are here. Corner. Gets two vertical. He knows number one is now his man. Balls off. Trigger. Go make a play. He does a great job of putting the foot in the ground. No wasted step. That's a T-step. Down in the ground. Over the top, do not put your hook hand before your swat hand, but he does also secure the tackle, which is exactly what we're looking for. We're getting the same thing, same basic concept to the field. Now our corner here does a good job of trying to help his safety out and also help out his outside linebacker. So he's letting his, no, letting his backer know he has an NNN route, which allows him to come off and be able to reattach. So yes, this guy is technically man to man, but he sees this is not a ball that's coming here right now, and he's trying to help his buddy, and at the end of the day, what we always say is if we're going to err, err on taking away the deep route and giving up the short stuff. All right, so here, what we have, same basic look. Now something that everybody's afraid of when you're in a basically a four high look. Yes, it's a read two coverage, but it's truly a four high look. So. The thing that people are afraid of, the thing that people uh, worry about is screens. So this is an, a time where the guy's doing a way better job of getting the weight on his front leg and having the opportunity to put that back leg in the ground and get downhill now. So the receiver blocks first threat, which allows, which he sees this guy is the first threat because he is technically triggering on ball off. Receiver goes and blocks him. That allows our linebacker to be a free runner, and they both meet at the ball carrier. That is exactly what we are looking for when we get the screen. Now, what I tell this safety on that play side, if you get screen, you are the guy looking for any type of screen and go, look and go, double pass. That is now your responsibility. It must declare past the line of scrimmage for that to be your fault or your issue, okay? So... That's big for this safety because everybody's going to come to it. They'll see both guys triggering, and then they're going to go to a screen and go. They're going to go to a bubble pass or anything like that. So this is a good look at the corner getting the weight, getting his read steps, playing through the receiver, keeping his outside shoulder free, not letting anything outside of him, allowing our linebacker to come through, be the free runner. Boom. Now we're in second and eight, and we're playing football. So at the end of the day, the read two coverage Yes, there are going to be some things that are hard to cover, but when the technique is done properly, we feel confident that pretty much any route concept given to us, we can go ahead and compete at our finest and let our guys be athletes at the end of the day.